Hi and welcome to the channel. My name is Megan and I make all of my flight bookings myself, usually searching through Google Flights because I love the flexibility of seeing all the different options for times, destinations, and prices. However, booking your own flights means that you need to be on alert for all of the little details of those flights and recognize that a good deal often comes at a less obvious cost. In today's video, I'll be running through 10 things to look out for before you book your flight that could potentially completely derail your trip or cause you to have to rebook your flights, which we all know is not cheap. The first mistake to avoid is flying in or out of the wrong airport. If you're on a site like Google Flights and you type in New York to London, you're going to see all the different flight options from all of the different airports leaving from New York to the different airports that fly into London. So you could end up having a flight that's departing from Newark, JFK, or LaGuardia. Double check the airport codes because you don't want to end up arriving at Newark Airport only to find out that your flight is actually departing from JFK. On a similar note, you may get an amazing deal that's going New York to London, but then when you look at the airport code, you'll see that it's actually flying into London's Gatwick Airport and not their main airport, Heathrow. Maybe the cost savings are worth it and you're okay with flying into Gatwick instead, but make sure you know it's going to Gatwick because if your final destination is closer to Heathrow, you could end up spending a lot of time and money to commute to that final destination and it may not be worth the cost savings. So double check your airport codes and make sure you know which airport you are flying out of and which airport you are flying into, not just the city you're flying out of and the city you're flying into. Many booking sites, like Google Flights, will show you options that require you to change airports at your connections if it's going to be a good deal. And sometimes it's going to end up saving you hundreds of dollars, so it's not an option to completely dismiss. But you do need to recognize that you will need a longer layover if you're going to have to switch airports. A common example of this is flying into Bangkok's main international airport and then transferring to their smaller airport, DMK, to catch an in-country flight if you were going to Phuket or Krabi or Chiang Mai. The trouble is that once you fly into Bangkok's main airport, if you didn't factor in several hours to get you at least 45 minutes to the new airport, you could end up completely missing your flight. If you just have a two-hour layover and you don't have to change airports, that's fine. If you have a two hour layover and you need to change airports, you're in trouble. So definitely check if you have a connection that requires a change of airport and then make sure that your layover is going to give you enough time to make the change. Also keep in mind that when you make the change to a new airport, you have to check in and check your baggage all over again. So again, make sure you have enough time. The third thing to look out for, whether you have to change airports or not, is too short of a connection time in general. When you're booking for yourself on a site like Google Flights, you'll often see flights that have very short connection times if they're going to be a great deal. You may see a great flight deal, but if the connection time is too tight, you're going to stress yourself out and risk potentially missing that flight. Flights are commonly delayed, international flights may have additional security lines, you may need to get through customs, and sometimes you even need to pick up and then recheck your baggage. My rule of thumb, regardless of how good of a flight deal it is, is to avoid booking any domestic flights with a connection time of less than one hour and any international flights with a connection time of less than two hours. The fourth thing to look out for is the opposite, which is too long of a connection time. You may end up saving a couple hundred dollars on your flight if you end up going with an 18 hour overnight layover. But then think about that layover. Are you going to need to get a hotel? Are you going to need to pay for transportation to get to that hotel and then back to the airport the next day and then also go through the time of rechecking in and rechecking all of your baggage? Is it worth it? If it's great savings, but a very long connection time, another option is to just hang out in the airport, which is probably what I would do. And if you plan on doing this, definitely check out the free website, Sleeping in Airports. It's pretty much exactly as it sounds. We will tell you all of the best places to get some sleep, as well as activities and Wi-Fi passwords, things to do while you are on your connection layover. 
If you're flying long haul international, my next tip is to check what countries you will be having your connections in. This may not matter to you, but it matters to me particularly when it comes to travel insurance. My travel insurance, like most travel insurances, are going to cost more if you have a stop in the US. So for example, I pay $37 a month to have my travel insurance coverage if I'm not traveling in the US or through the US. By simply having a connection in a US city, my travel insurance will jump from $37 a month to $67 a month. This is common, US is usually a premium add-on. So you may not think about it, but your travel insurance could be completely voided if you have a connection in a US city and you don't have a US add-on to your travel insurance. So typically if I'm flying from Canada to an international destination that is outside of the US, I will avoid traveling through the US altogether. My next tip when booking your own flights is to double check what the baggage limitations are. If you are going with a low cost carrier, which many sites like Google Flights will show you options with and you can end up scoring some very cheap flights. These are carriers like Ryanair, AirAsia, Spirit, Wow Airlines. The trouble with these is that they end up making their money on the additional add-ons as opposed to the actual flight ticket. So you could see a very cheap flight on Google Flights with Ryanair but let's say you have two bags that you need to check with you. While many airlines still have at least one check bag included in the price, these budget airlines usually don't. So with Ryanair, you could end up paying 50 US dollars for each bag that you check each way. So you could end up paying more by flying on one of these budget airlines, which includes no food, no drinks, limited leg room, than you would have paid if you had flown with a standard airline on the more expensive price that had all of these things that you needed included. So my tip here is to just really look at the deal that you're going for and see what's included with taxes, with fees, with baggage, all the details so you know what your final cost is going to be, not just the cost of the flight ticket. My seventh tip is very simple, but absolutely key if you're booking your own flights. This is to update your spam or your junk folder settings so that any communications that come through from the airline go to your inbox and not straight to your junk where you may never see them. If you're booking your own flights, you are the one that is in charge if there's going to be any changes to your itinerary. The airline will try to get in touch with you directly, which means you need to see these emails to know if there are going to be any important changes to your itinerary. When you're booking a flight with Google Flights, my next tip is to not confuse a direct flight with a non-stop flight. A non-stop flight is exactly as it sounds, you will fly from your departure airport directly to your destination airport. However, a direct flight may include stops along the way to pick up and drop off passengers. This means you are going up in the air, down, multiple times, it's going to take longer. So you might want to be paying more for a flight that doesn't have these additional stops along the way, even if it's going to be more expensive. Next, if you're booking your own flight and you intend to use loyalty points that you've collected with an airline, make sure you read the checkout page thoroughly. Using points to book a free flight doesn't actually include the taxes and the airport fees that come along with that flight. For example, I have enough loyalty points to book a one-way flight from Canada to Asia. This sounds pretty good to have a free long-haul flight, but then when I put the details in and I get to the checkout page, I'll see that I'll end up paying an additional $500 in taxes and fees. So the total cost of this flight for one way is going to be all of my points plus an additional $500. My alternative would be to book a round trip flight and round trip is almost always uh, cheaper when it's a long haul international than a one way and it would cost me from Canada to Asia and back to Canada a grand total of $700 and zero points. If I were to go with the option to use my points and get to Asia, I'd be spending, like I said, all of my points plus $500, and then I would also need to book another one way when I wanted to come home. That one way flight would likely cost me between $600 and $700. As you can see, it is a much better deal and much better value for your money to book a round trip and pay for it in full as opposed to using all of your points. Using points, I've 
I'm not the person to give you tips on this, but from what I read and what I've seen, it is much more valuable for you to use your points for things like upgrades or for shorter domestic flights than it is for these long haul international flights. I will also leave a few resources down below, they're free, that have helped me and one of them actually helps you see what the value of your points is worth in dollars so you know if it's better to just pay for your flight or better to be using your points. My final tip when it comes to booking your own flights is to maybe consider not booking your own flight. Don't completely dismiss using a good travel agent. A good travel agent, especially if it's your first time booking flights or if you have a complicated itinerary with multiple stops, can end up saving you a heck of a lot of money. They're getting a small fee as well, but you may also end up saving. They can show you options that you maybe didn't see were available and are also going to be able to catch all of the mistakes that I mentioned in this video, such as high baggage fees even though it's a cheap flight or um, too short of a connection time or connections that involve airport changes. They keep track of all of this for you and the peace of mind to having everything done correctly may be worth it. If you do still decide to book your own flights, then I definitely recommend that you check out Rakuten. I've mentioned Rakuten so many times on this channel. It's a very popular, very simple cash back service that partners with thousands of stores from Sephora to Lululemon to Expedia. So if you're booking your flights, which is a pretty high ticket option, you can get a certain percent of cash back on that flight booking. I ended up saving hundreds of dollars by using Rakuten to book my flights in 2019. I'll leave all the details for Rakuten as well as every other resource that I mentioned in this video, I'm pretty sure all of them were free, in the description down below. In summary, there are many, many benefits to booking your own flights, but then the drawback is that you need to pay attention to all of these little details and be on the ball with any changes to your itinerary. If you made it this far in this video, you should be well on your way to successfully booking your own flights and avoiding some of these key mistakes. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. Then let me know in the comments if you plan to book your own flights when travel opens up again. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you back here again for another video next Tuesday.